Good evening Bahrain. I'm Bernadette from Gulf Brands International. You're watching Wine Online Wednesday. We are now on episode 23 and it's our festive dinner selection. So you might have guessed that it's actually Christmas time. Probably the silly red hat and the little Christmas tree with camels on it has given the game away. So we've come up with a nice selection tonight of wines that could take you through a nice dinner or even taking different wines at random for other events. And the best thing of all is they're all part of our super winter sale. So let's crack on. First wine we're gonna have is champagne. Brut champagne, you can never have too much champagne. So we're going to start tonight with Moutard Pearl. Look at that. Beautiful mousse. Ooh, I think I've put, poured a bit too much for a taste. Just tempted. So there we go. That is a lovely pour of champagne. You've got lovely beading, which is where the little bubbles are coming up from the bottom. And you've got a beautiful mousse there on top. Now, champagne, as we all know, is the most wonderful, romantic, celebratory drink to have. And the area in France that it comes from is called Rheims. The, uh, the Champagne area, the capital of the area, is Rheims. And we're going to go a little bit off-piste with this winery tonight. So we're going to go about two hours south of Rheims, and you come to a little enclave called the Côte de Bar, which is a rather particular little area in Champagne. Uh, it's not actually contiguous with the whole Champagne area, so it's in a little island of land by itself. Uh, and they're a bit radical down there. There are quite a few rebels, to the extent that in the early 1900s, uh, it was actually kicked out of the Champagne Consortium, the union of recognised champagne. So they decided to just go their own way and produce wine and champagne how they want to do it. Uh, we have down there then uh, Moutard, family Moutard, and this is the La Pearl range from Moutard. Now, Moutard has been making wine there for a good few years. Actually, the documentary evidence first mentions the name Moutard, making wine in 1642. But that's all a little bit prehistoric for us. So let's look at when did the Moutard winery appear. And that was in 1952, founded by Lucien. Today, Francois Moutard still holds the reins down there and is making these superb wines. Uh, Apart from the fact that the Côte de Bar region, it's also geographically quite different to the rest of the Champagne area. Now Champagne typically is very, very flat land with lines and lines of really densely packed vines. Get down into the Côte de Bar and it's like a little Eden. It's got forests, streams, little hills, little dales, patches of vineyards here, there and everywhere, country folk enjoying themselves and making these wines. Champagne itself is made officially from six different grapes. The main grapes that we all know and love are Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. Now there are, there are another three weird grapes which the big boys do not touch at all because they're just a little bit eccentric and unreliable. However, Francois, uh, being a rebel, from that area uh, makes an amazing wine called the Ses Sepage, the Six Sepage. He uses all six grapes in a blend, which is considered radical. And if that wasn't enough, each year, in special years rather, he produces a monovarietal. Okay, so you can have you can have a champagne which is 100% Pinot Noir, 100% Chardonnay, but 100% Arban, which is one of the little lesser grapes considered profoundly weird and highly rated each time that he does release the vintage. But today we're looking at something a little bit more commercial. La Pearl is 100% Pinot Noir, which is quite interesting. So the Pinot Noir grape, as you know, it's a black grape, or rather it's a dusky greyish, bluish, purpley. When the grapes are pressed, to get this champagne from the black grape, very, very gentle pressing, and do not let the colour of the skin touch the juice at all, otherwise you'll end up with a rosé. So, let's see how this is. Well, we've still got our lovely bubbles coming up. 
By the way, this is a perfect glass shape for champagne and sparkling wine. It's an elegant tulip shape. Uh, the old flat glasses, which were reportedly modelled on Marie Antoinette's breast, are now do not serve champagne in them. They're perfect for cocktails and sorbets, but not for champagne. So we've got a lovely dark strawish colour, very clean. Let's see how it is on the nose. Mmm, pears, crispy pears. And uh, a slight almondy hint. But this is this is puzzling because there's a little bit of a red fruity note coming in, yet we're clearly looking at a white wine. I think we need to have a taste. Hmm. The pears on the nose have now moved into more of a white peach, a stone fruit. White peach and maybe a hint of very young, very young apricot. And I was getting an almond note on the nose and I think that's there in the finish as well. Oh, so quite lingering. It's got a slightly yeasty, biscuity flavour as well. So I think this could work with food if you're having some nice little canapes or little appetizers. Um, but I think this is very quaffable by itself. Mm, that will work well. That'll be very nice. So um, here we have the bottle. Now, just as we were going to video this, the bottle has sold out. I'm very sorry to tell you this. However, we do have a Magnum, and the price of the Magnum is less than you would pay for a bottle. So it's an absolutely cracking good price. It is Christmas, it is New Year. Go for it, go large or go home. You really need to enjoy a Magnum of this champagne at such a good price, it's really good. So we've started our dinner, we've welcomed our guests, we've had a lovely glass of champagne. Might even slip an oyster in there, I think, while we're just getting started. And let's move on to a white wine. So you always need a nice white to start the evening. We are actually now in uh, winter time in Bahrain. So I think we need something with a little bit more mellow. Um, and especially as festive dinners at this time of the year, the food is a lot richer as well. So I think we do need a Chardonnay. I think we go California for a nice Chardonnay. And we're going to Robert Mondavi. So. Robert Mondavi, the godfather of American wine, was the son of an immigrant family who moved from Marche in Italy to Minnesota, of all places. And his father, Cesare, uh, his first involvement in the wine business was he used to travel to California to buy wine and then ship it back to Minnesota because there was permission for a family to produce up to 200 gallons of wine a year. And being a good hot-blooded Italian, he was like, oh, you have to have wine, how can you live without wine? So that's how he got involved in it. Then he eventually, he moved the whole family to California. Robert got involved, his son Robert got involved in wine. And the first big break that he made was uh, in 1943, he actually bought the Charles Krug winery, which was closing down. It was a wonderful opportunity for him. Uh, prohibition had been repealed in 1933 and in those enduring years he built up a following for his wine. Now he was able to get everything rolling in a winery. Success followed success and he got to 1966 when the Robert Mondavi winery was founded and never looked back. So, The Robert Mondavi private selection, the grapes for this are, this is the Chardonnay, excuse me, should have mentioned that. This is a Chardonnay, by the way. So the grapes here are from the central coast. So we're talking about a cool climate with nice cool evenings, sea breezes, so sh you should have some nice fresh, fresh fruit. But you also have hot days, so you should have some concentration of flavour in the fruit as well. Uh, so let's see how this one is. Oh, um, um, 
American apple pie. <laughs> yeah, can't get more American than that. Baked apples, but there is there is a little fresh citrusness, citrus uh, sensation coming through, and it's not too zingy. It's very soft. It's mellow. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Oh, I rather like this. This is signature California. This is just right. If you like very lean and mean Chardonnays, uh, like a, a Chablis, or a stony Chardonnay from a very cool climate, you will not be happy here. Um, but if you like a treat, if you're like a wine to talk to, this is lovely. It's got the apple notes, but they're baked. It's got, um, it's actually got a hint of, dare I say it, creme brulee, because there's a hint of little um, dessert sweetness in the finish. And there is some toasty notes. That's because I think about half of the wine was put in oak barrels for, uh, it, aging would have taken must have been at least six months, six to eight months here. So you do have some little oaky toasty notes coming through. Also, vinification for this wine, when they were pressing the grapes, they do whole cluster. So pick a bunch of grapes, drop it in, and press the whole thing with the stalks. Now, that stopped with the oak aging in barrel, getting too fat and too round. So there's a little bit of greeny tannin coming through from those clusters from the stems in the clusters which just balances it lovely so I'm thinking this is for your first first course um, and again so we're going to have something nice and rich with it maybe a little risotto um, a baked fish I don't tell if I don't think it's very sushi friendly actually this wine but we are looking for rich food aren't we in tonight's dinner yes yeah that's lovely so onto the main course and we'll stay in California we'll now go to Sonoma and we're going to a winery called Murphy Good. Murphy Good is a bit of a baby in the wine industry it was founded in 1985 by three blokes who were playing cards one night they all love wine and they decided let's have some fun together the winemakers were Murphy and Good the marketeer was a guy called Dave um, Dave has done an awful lot to put the name on the map and get the message across that these two guys are making superb wines. They were pioneers in the industry in 1985 because they brought in different trellising and uh, a wide-scale drip irrigation methods. So they brought in various methods, shook up Sonoma a bit, and they decided the wines they're going to make are going to be stand out and deliver what it says on the label. So tonight we've got a Merlot. Merlot Merlot, Mellow Merlot. This should be quite happy with, um, if you're going to have turkey, uh, we're talking about a white meat, but which has got stronger, bigger texture than other poultries. Um, so let's see if this can work with a turkey. Roast meats should go down a treat with this. Anyway, so let's see what it's all about. So, all right, we've got deep red with a little bit of browning around the edges, showing the age, because this is 2013. Where are we? 13, yes. So this should be just on point. Ooh, on point and still juicy. Black cherries. Black cherries, blueberries, blackberries. This is very, very nice. Mm. Okay. Big cherry wine. Lots of cherries coming through here. And plums, squishy plums, not the, those hard ones that are still very astringent. Squishy plums. And dare I say, in the, na in the end, Little, little hint of mocha, chocolatey, little hint. Smooth as silk, 
very rounded, very smooth. That will be lovely with a turkey, especially the brown meat of the turkey. And it can also handle roasts, grills, um, veggies based, baked in the oven. We we'll go down a treat with that. Very nice. So, still, I hope you haven't eaten too much because we need some decent cheese and we need some decent wine to go with our decent cheese. So we're going to go back to Robert Mondavi um, and we'll go for the cab. Yeah, so here we go, the private selection cab. Now this is about, this is 90% Cabernet and it's got a hint of Syrah in it as well. Syrah and Petit Syrah. Let's see if that has any influence on it. So. Oh, getting cherry and okay I almost said blackberry but we've got blackberry firmly planted in here black currant so a little bit more stringy on the on the palate black currant mm. beautiful balance cherry but black currant to give a little astringency and in this case while the wine was being made it was actually destemmed the stems were removed why because the Cabernet and especially Syrah they can deliver quite powerful flavors especially through the skins of the grapes that to keep it subtle and smooth they decided not to do a whole cluster it's also seen some oak, it's seen quite a bit of oak here. I think this has had about 10 months in oak. And there is a very smooth hint of oak. But I think the, the biggest flavour for me coming through here is black currants. Lovely and savoury. I think this would be fabulous with some nice strong cheeses. And actually, uh, yeah, I was suggesting you only need a half bottle of the Chardonnay and a half bottle of the Cab because there's a number of courses but get another half bottle of the Chardonnay because that is so lovely you could also have that with the cheese especially with some softer milder cheeses just beautiful to have the two together mm, yeah. and we come to the end and we bounce back to France and we go to the Loire not a million miles away from the Champagne area and we go to the area known as Muscadet de Sèvremain. De Sèvremain is the confluence of two rivers, the Sèvre and the Main. Um, Muscadet is a grape, also known as Melon de Bourgogne, and it produces in its more familiar um, format a very dry, very zingy, refreshing white wine, which is a big fan of seafood. Now the example we've got here today is the other extreme. We are here at the Chateau de Coney, which means corner, because it's literally at the corner of where the two rivers meet in the Sevre main area of Muscadet. And it's a family winery, currently being run by a mother and daughter. The mother is a pharmacist, Veronique, and Aurora is a enologist. So they really enjoy their wines. They own beautiful property there and they have been nurturing their vines now for, my goodness, it, the family has been noted for making wine since 14 something. So they're really continuing a tradition here. So this is Vendage Tardive, late harvest. This is a very special expression of the wine. And what happens here is the harvest does not take place in August, September, as it would in the area. Instead, the grapes, selected grapes, will stay on the vine until October. This is a winemaker's challenge. You've got to take a big risk on the weather and on the fact that you can keep the grapes nurtured and concentrating. What's happening is they're getting more and more sugarized as they go along. Finally, harvest time, get these grapes in. They're just oozing with sweetness and fruit. And this is Vendage, is harvest, tardive, late, late harvest. So we're talking about the grape is 100% the fresh zingy muscadet. 
And what, how does it happen, come out when it's a late harvest? Deep golden colour, nothing like the standard muscadet, glinting, gorgeous. And you can see almost, if you can see the viscosity, it's almost looking thick. Now this is 13% alcohol. It looks almost as if it should be thicker. And that's due to the such a high sweetness level in the wine. Oh, honey, uh, white, white stewed fruit, uh, quince. Quince is a particular fruit used, I think I remember it more in making jam. How are we on the palate? Let's have a look. Mm, delicious, gorgeous. The nose is very honeyed, very, very Moorish. The palate, it's sweet, it's gorgeous, but at the end, there's a nice little bit of acidity. It's not too cloying. That is just divine. Now, depending on your taste in wine, this could be lovely as an aperitif. Usually it's places at the end of the meal where it's served with sweets and I think you could have, this would be lovely with desserts. And you know what, if you've still got some cheese left after having the Robert Mondavi Cab, the Robert Mondavi Shard, you could, especially if you've got a little bit of Stilton or a salty, salty cheese, try it with this, it would be absolutely divine. Mm. Beautiful. Sweet and smooth. Perfect ending. Right, that's our lineup for tonight. Uh, just a suggestion, pick and choose, and they're all, as I said, from our lovely winter wine sale. So, Christmas around the corner. Do enjoy the festivities catch up with you next week as we head into the last weekend of the year. So meanwhile, see you out with a glass of bubbly. Good night. <laughs>